Hmm. You know what I could do with right now? A nice cup of English breakfast tea. Zara, keep on the kettle. No, do yourself. <sighs> mm. That's better. Hello, everyone. As you may have noticed, I'm no mere empty shell of a YouTube educator. I'm a person of flesh and blood, with desires and dreams. And every once in a while, I like a cup of hot water infused with Indian tea leaves. And it is our tendency to form such desires and dreams that indicates how perceptions tantalise our psyche. <laughs> Last time, we looked at information metabolism and how it spans four domains of information. Sensation, intuition, logic, and ethics. This time round, we're just going to be looking at the perceptions, which are intuition and sensation. But first of all, why do we call these perceptions? Perceptions are information that Jung described as irrational devoid of any kind of rhyme or reason. They are the opposite to judgments. With perceptions, you are motivated to act not because you should do something. It's nothing to do with being right or wrong. But it is all about what you want, what you fancy, whatever grabs your interest or satisfies a hunger. After all, as David Hume said, you cannot derive an ought from an is. There is no stone tablet decreeing, thou shalt have a cup of tea. I just fancied one, and its caffeinated qualities influencing my brain has resulted in the happy chap you see before you. So perception comes in two varieties, intuition and sensation. How do we differentiate them? Well, to do this, we have to learn two dichotomies. The first of these is external and internal. This is all about how objective and shareable, or subjective and interpreted, a kind of information is. Sensation would be external, as it is concrete and grounded in reality. If I were to point a kind of sensation out, say, a tree stump, and say that it's rather stumpy, you would be able to see that same tree stump and heartily agree on its stumpiness. This is not the case for intuition which would be internal. Intuition is abstract. It exists in the mind's eye and has no real physical form. If I were to ask you to think of an example of an abstract concept, say, irony, you may put together an idea of it in your head, but there is very little likelihood another person would put together the same idea of irony in his head. Irony is an abstracted idea that exists across countless manifestations such as a fire station burning down, or a police station getting robbed. And in thinking of an example of irony, you have had to interpret it in your own way, something you wouldn't have to do if you were handling a piece of sensation. A second dichotomy is involved and detached. This is all about how we interact with the information, whether it is something we can feel vivaciously, or something we merely think about in a way that is removed from ourselves. Here, sensation is very much involved. It is something we can physically feel. When you sit on a thumbtack, you notice. The painful sensation on your bum draws your attention with an urgency and demands some kind of response in the moment. With intuition, the opposite is the case. No one can ever say they have been hit over the head by the concept of anti-disestablishmentarianism even if the idea inspired men and women to take a more concrete action. Similarly, no one has ever been tripped up by a memory of a past, or a future possibility. We never say that we feel an idea. We only ever say that we think about them. And that is a signifier that intuition is detached from us, despite originating within our minds. 
So we have two kinds of perception. The external, involved sensation, and the internal, detached intuition. But that's not the end of the story. Once we have each domain of information, it is important to consider the human element. After all, information metabolism is all about a living organism and how it interacts with various resources. It happens to be that you could approach the same kind of information in two separate ways. To better understand these different approaches, we need another two dichotomies. The first is static and dynamic. This focuses on the substance of the information, whether it is seen to be composed of clear, separately identifiable parts, this would be static, or is treated as being more fluid and holistic, which would be dynamic. When a static element of information undergoes change, it snaps into a different shape all at once. When a dynamic element undergoes change, it is a gradual, continuous process being at no time entirely different from what came immediately before or after. The second is extroverted and introverted. This is about the volume of the information, whether the focus is to increase and diversify the quantity of information, or if the focus is for the information to be selectively refined in quality. With the extroverted approach, more and more information should be added until there is as much as possible. For introverted, the amount of information should be carefully reduced until all that remains fits together perfectly. If you approach a perception in an extroverted way, it must also be static. Or if you approach a perception in an introverted way, it must be dynamic. After all, our desires can be in one of two different ways. You can either have lots of different specific desires, which you acquire and then move on from, say, uh, an expensive car or a new video game. Or your desire could be some sort of singular holistic state or outcome, such as nirvana or a happy marriage, something which you want to aim at and maintain rather than just move away from once you've acquired it. To help illustrate, I like to think of these different approaches in terms of natural elements. Extroverted and static would be like bolts of lightning, unpredictable and chaotic, zipping quickly from one position almost instantaneously to another. In contrast, I like to think of introverted and dynamic as being like a calm, languid pool of water, gradually changing and adjusting its form in line with temperature and air currents and that shape of the soil containing it but without any sudden shifts. If we take these two approaches, static extroversion and dynamic introversion, and apply them to intuition and sensation, we get four of the most basic and fundamental building blocks of socionics. These would be information metabolism elements. Taking a static, extroverted approach to sensation is pretty straightforward. It brings an expansive, ambitious character to how we can approach the physical world, where the goal is to act directly, decisively, and impactfully, taking on the most territory, possessions, power, or influence over one's surroundings. This element of sensation is frequently called extroverted sensation, or force, as is the sensation of acting forcefully on your environment. A dynamic, introverted approach to sensation brings a very different attitude to our physical world. Instead of wanting to aggressively impact on reality, this approach focuses on refining the quality of physical experience, reducing any activity or aggression which disturbs the calm and peacefulness of the moment. This pursuit and maintenance of a singular sense of harmony of one's surroundings, a complete immersion in the flow of the moment with the absence of pain or hunger, is called introverted sensation, or senses, as it is the sensation where the quality of sensory experience is prioritised. In contrast to force, a static, extroverted approach to intuition is going to be far less physical. Rather than exercising domination of reality, extroverted intuition, also known as ideas, is all about expanding the breadth of what is possible, chasing whatever concept takes one's interest exploring new theories, 
and being open to different perspectives. Rather than taking direct action, it speculates and looks to alternative points of view. Finally, there is the dynamic, introverted approach to intuition. Instead of keeping possibilities open, this introverted intuition, known as time, wants to close possibilities down, focusing instead on the one transcendent purpose or outcome to dedicate one's thoughts and attention to. Instead of possibility, the emphasis is on a singular inevitability, a destiny to fulfil, or a consequence to predict and plan for. Rather than aim at full immersion in the flow of the moment, time looks to detach from our worldly concerns, aiming higher and deeper at the most meaningful paths a person can take. With force, ideas, senses and time, we have the four information metabolism elements of perception. However, what about judgments? In the next episode, we will look at judgments and expand the number of information elements from four to eight. Thank you for tuning in to our introductory series to Socionics. If you like our videos, please subscribe and click the little bell so you're notified when we release new videos. Also, please consider becoming a patron of the World Socionic Society. You can do this by clicking the link below.